it's it's like one of those big government warehouses of just random 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 shit everywhere yep. and it's all good for the public <laughs> I don't want to talk about how much whiskey I just got on my blazer. Thank you so much for joining us for your dose of Weekly Whiskey with John and Jay. Weekly Whiskey is made on Mackie. If you'd like to find out more about the top-notch studio gear we're using, you can check it out on Mackie.com. Without further ado, what are we uh, what are we talking about tonight, John? I think it's time that we uh, close out the year by discussing our Whiskey of the Year contenders our top picks and the things that we like the most about the whiskey world this year jay let's do it all right let's hop on in if you uh if you like if you disagree if you've had one of these you wish you could get your pause on go ahead and drop it in the comments below but let's go ahead and start on off i have my bourbon of the year what do you okay. think you ready yeah go ahead let's do uh bourbon rye finished whiskey we'll go through all of them okay full king caboodle full trip around the merry ground um i'm starting my bourbon of the year is Woodford Reserve's Very Fine Rare. Um, this is popping out. This was a crazy good release. Uh, really powerful. Really showed a different side of Woodford Reserve, and, and I like to reward that. thought it was really good. That's interesting, man. It's pretty rare, uh, I would say, for either one of us to be massively big on Woodford, but when they do it right, right they kill it. Their batch proof from 2019, I thought, was an absolute stunner. So some of these LEs that they're rolling out are totally kicking ass, and I, I think that's a cool pick. Yeah, and it would be hard to go on without talking about my runner-up, which is Maker's Mark FAEO2. This was the Fatty Aster, Fatty Acid Aster um, yep. O2. This was the second release. This was the first time they did two releases in a single year. Super loved this one, but had to give the hat tip to Woodford. Yep, that's fair. I think the FAEO2 is absolutely money, too. Um, I, I had kind of considered that one to be finished, so I didn't put it into my contention here. But uh, I'll, I'll roll ahead with mine, and we'll talk about these a little bit more here. So my bourbon of the year is New Riff Single Barrel. And so this could be a store pick or a club pick or whatever, or it could just be your standard New Riff Single Barrel that you go down to the store and buy. I think these represent a ton of value, a ton of flavor. I know that we've been pumping the tires on New Riff all year. I'm not going to stop. They're still killing it. I mean, they're getting more and more available. Their age is coming out with, or their age statements are increasing, I should say. And they're coming out with more and more limited edition stuff. I mean, these guys, they're just doing it right. We had a great time talking with Jay Arisman uh, in an uh, interview with him on these. And I think that everything this brand is doing with that product line is just killing it. So bourbon of the year for me is going to be New Riff Single Barrel. My runner-up this year is actually the limited edition Russell's Reserve 13. I know this one this one tested a little better for me than it did for you. I dig that older profile. I also think that this product did what it was intended to do, which I think is combat Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. It's coming in 13-year, age-dated, non-chill filter, barrel-proof. Uh, SRP is, I think, around 79 bucks. Like, this scratched a lot of itch. And for me, that put it right up there. I didn't want to have, like, a, an extremely allocated limited edition as my bourbon of the year. So, in this scenario, it took a runner-up slot. But, damn, did I like it. Man, I couldn't agree more. I, You know... You liked it more than I did, but I, I definitely think it deserves recognition. And you're right, totally there to combat Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Uh, what do you say? Moving on to the rye? Yeah, let's talk about rye. So my rye, uh, this should be no surprise. I have been all about this distillery all year round. I've done a couple picks there. Love what they're doing. Uh, Dr. Pat Heist is one of the coolest people we've talked to this year. So Wilderness Trail Single Barrel Rye is, is my pick for rye of the year. And yeah... Single barrel, you're going to get some variants, but I've had so many just standout barrels that it, it, I had to crown this one. Sure. I mean, that's like my bourbon pick of New Rose Single Barrel. Like, I have yeah. not had one that I thought was bad. If you see one, buy it is the recommendation here. Yeah, I'm basically going through life just picking up Wilderness Trail Single Barrel Rise, just putting yeah. it in the cart. Yeah, I'm piling um, them up. And it's hard not to knock. Uh, my rye runner-up is Starlight Straight Rye. Really surprising. Four years old. Had a couple barrels, picked a couple for the Arb Urban crew. Really love what they're doing. Four years in a day. Uh, those Kelvin barrels, those Canton barrels, really showing a lot of character. Great, great backup. It's the best yeah. I got. Starlight's kicking ass, man. They've got such a wild array of stuff out there, too. That Like, if you can't find a whiskey you like in their portfolio, you're not doing something right. <laughs> it's, it's like one of those big government warehouses of just random, random, random shit everywhere. Yep. And it's all good for the most part. So for me, my rye of the year is really no surprise. Uh, it is the same as last year. It is a wild turkey, rare breed rye. 
this thing is getting somewhat more available now. I've seen it. I've seen folks posting prices as low as 50 bucks on this thing. Oh, God. I think for non-chill filtered, delicious barrel burp rye, it's really tough to complain about this. So this one for me just brings forward an absolute ton of flavor and a lot of value for what it is. So this year again, Wild Turkey Rare Breed Rye is my, my number one in the rye category. My runner-up is basically strictly on flavor alone because let's talk about price. Let's talk about availability again. Mictor's Barrel Strength Rye is not going to hit all of the marks for you, but just on flavor alone. I just love this stuff. It's really good rye. So it's going to be my runner-up. Now now you got me thinking. I, w- I would have put that as my runner-up. runner, runner up. Really like what Mictor's is doing. So. Double runner, yeah. <laughs> the double runner-up. <laughs> all right, moving on. Finished whiskey. This should also come as no surprise. Maybe we should just title this our top picks that surprise nobody. But finished whiskey is Barrel Seagrass. This blend of straight rise at Barrel Proof featuring a bunch of different finishes. Uh, basically, I would go off the air if this wasn't the best the best of the year. This, this rye was killer, super bold, super interesting. I have not met a single person that didn't like it, and I think that that says it all. So this is my finished whiskey of the year, Seagrass, from the folks over at Barrel Craft Spirits. Uh, for my runner-up, this one was really cool too. I really like what this guy's doing. Sealbox Private Reserve. We also called this the French Toast uh, Factory of Flavor. This was a blend of two-year and ten-year whiskey that was finished in maple syrup barrels, French oak barrels. This was too crazy not to enjoy, too crazy not to mention. It couldn't quite topple seagrass. I can't think of anything that would, but uh, but definitely an honorable mention for the runner-up on this guy. This was too crazy, too crazy not to love. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, man. Uh, the finish category this year, holy shit, is it? Uh, I mean, we've been it talking busy. about the We've been talking about the difference between like finished products, blended products, and single barrels, and how I I think we started this year by saying, is this the year that single barrels take a back seat? Mm -hmm. And holy shit, it's getting close. Because, I mean, look at the amount of delicious finished stuff coming out. My finished whiskey of the year is also, no surprise, barrel seagrass. I mean, (laughs) if I had to just pick one, wipe the entire list, and say, what's my whiskey of the year? It's barrel seagrass. I mean, this product came out of nowhere and it's part of their evergreen lineup with armida and dovetail you combine this with seagrass and holy shit do you have the wildest array of blended and finished whiskeys it this is a true master class and using ingredients to make something that is more than the sum of its parts it is just delicious my runner-up is actually something that comes right along the same vein and so this is the boss hog eight the Lapu Lapu Pacific. The rum finished 17 year rye. Again, both of my uh, finished whiskeys are rye. I think they're both delicious. These are both up there. There's just so much more value in the barrel seagrass, though. I'm oh, in. Yeah, the seagrass, the seagrass just checks literally every box. Um, really enjoyed that. You know, the, the Boss Hog myself really enjoyed that episode. That's a good one, especially coming after Magellan's. But right. moving. Moving right along, we have the American whiskey category. This is one we've really seen develop in recent years, especially this year. You know, like we talked about, uh, blends popped up, finished whiskeys popped up, so did American whiskey. I'd be remiss. I, I love a couple of the expressions we're seeing. I don't I don't love them all, but I really enjoyed Old Carter 14 years. That's going to be my American whiskey of the year. I had this one. It rated pretty high. It's straight pancake syrup all day. Really delectable. It wasn't the most complex, but it was 100% enjoyable, and I love just sitting down with that. You know what you're gonna get? It's all dessert all night long. I love it, and it's high proof too. This thing will, this thing will peel the pain if you let it. Yeah, I'm with you on these, man. Um, actually, I think one of our very first reviews, maybe even our first review of this year, again to pat ourselves on the back just a little bit, was a Bull Run 13 Year American Whiskey. Mm, yeah, that's gonna be my American Whiskey of the Year. The Bull Run 13 Years. They're offering these as single barrel picks. Some of them are finished and some of them are not. They're just absolutely killing it with these things. The pricing is extremely reasonable. You're talking anywhere from like 40 to 65 bucks, depending on you know what state you're in and what the availability is and whatnot, if it's been finished and things like that. Holy shit, are these good. And again, like you said, <laughs> they're not the most complex thing out there, but they are packed with flavor. What they do, they do extremely well. And I think that American whiskey is only going to get more and more a spotlight with how hard it is to get these limited editions with the amount of bourbon exposure out there these days. You know, folks are lining up at fucking the night before to buy limited editions. 
when there's 13 year American whiskey sitting on the shelf for 50 ish bucks, I think you're going to see that popularity rise more and more. Uh, did I have a runner up? For the, oh, I did have a runner up in the Ma American category. It was the King's Family Light Whiskey. So the King's Family is um, closely tied to the MGP recipes, as you'll notice as you dig through their portfolio. They've got some of their own stuff as well, but they've got a, a pretty good stock of old MGP light whiskey. And some of these single barrels are just money, just flavor-wise. Again, like that total like butterscotch, waffle cone, just caramel delicious bombs, like so much flavor. Not incredibly complex, but the pricing is good, and damn, are they tasty. Yeah, like you said, light whiskey knows what it does. It does it well. It's not typically as complex as a as well-aged bourbon or rye, um, but it, you know it can give you an interesting profile. And speaking of interesting profiles, this is probably the most interesting bourbon I had all year. To give you a little foreshadowing, this is my honorable mention of 2021, and this comes from Rabbit Hole. This is the Rabbit Hole Race King, which features a double chocolate malt. This is the probably, like I said, you know it's the most interesting. It's so malty. It's so chocolatey. It's cast strength. It comes in a just this honker of a bottle really cool presentation but overall if you like cocoa if you like caramel if you like uh, chocolate cereal these are all of the things you want so this is my honorable mention it couldn't quite topple some of these other big bottles that i'd love to just sit down with every single night if i could but really interesting really fun and i want to reward it uh so honorable mention i like that so i actually had three honorable mentions because damn i didn't realize that you were only doing one so i brought three <laughs> Um, so my honorable mention is actually three honorable mentions, but I'll just go through these a little bit quickly here. Um, I want to mention Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Usually the B-Batch is one that I tend to like. That's just me. My I don't know what it is with the profile, but I kind of dig those. The Wilderness Trail Single Barrel Rye, which was in your category as well for the rise. And the Barrel Gold Label, their new release of the ultra age stuff that they have finished and blended. I just think they did a great job with it. The pricing just kept it out of my top bourbon lineup, but... Other than that, those are my honorable mentions for the year, man. Right on. Well, this is a hell of a list. Like we said, if you have tried any of these, if you have thoughts, I know, you know, lists like these were always kind of controversial, but these are our picks. We love them. These are all very special to us from this year, whether from episodes we covered or tastings that we loved or just like seagrass, which I could drink every, every goddamn day. But it has been great to have you guys. And uh, yeah, so top 10, you know, top bottles of the year. This is always kind of contentious, but I'm... Uh, I'm all about this Woodford Reserve Very Fine Rare. That was kind of my big surprise, so good Woodford, and hopefully we see him strong in 2022. Absolutely, man. Thanks for catching your dose of weekly whiskey with John and Jay. Yeah, thanks for joining us, guys. If you like what we're doing, if you like the content that we're putting out, if you want to get some more information from the world of whiskey, you can go ahead and join on over in our community. Uh, you can find us at patreon.com slash thewhiskeynet. And don't forget to check out our studio sponsor, Mackie. You can find them on Instagram at Mackie Gear or on their website, Mackie.com. Hell yeah. Like we mentioned before, Mackie is awesome. They're the reason this podcast sounds as great as it does. And if you're looking for more from John, you can find him over at thebourbonfinder.com. And if you're looking for more from me, you can find me at whiskeyraiders.com. We are the Rotten Tomatoes Whiskey. We're having a great time reviewing all of these great whiskeys you've seen here. And thanks for joining us, guys. Cheers. Cheers, everybody.